Hi, this is the Body and X, and uh, this is the YouTube channel for the Candid Frame, where I take images that have been submitted by the Flickr poll, and I t talk about different aspects of photography. Now, one of my favorite photographers is Jay Maisel, and when he describes his own work, he's often broken it down into three three ideas or themes, and they are light, color, and gesture. And the first two are, are pretty obvious for a lot of people to, to grasp, but gesture can be a lot, a lot more elusive. And I know when, you know, when I'm thinking about my own photographs, it's that latter one, the gesture that I'm often looking for. I do a lot of street photography, and uh, oftentimes I'm looking for that little something, something, that little something special that sometimes I can't really quantify in, in words, but I know when I see it. So what I decided to do was to pick some images that uh, are very obvious sometimes with what the gesture is and some other images with the gesture is a lot more subtle. And I think that regardless of what type of photography that you practice, um, gesture can be the critical element that really makes a shot really exceptional. We can all make really good shots, be it of people, of landscapes, of, of still lives, but to differentiate our work from everyone else who's photographing the very same subject, it's often an element of patience and insight that really determine when the photographer presses down on the shutter release button to actually make the photograph. And I think we'll have a good opportunity to talk about that today. Um, here's an image by uh, Gehenti. And this is a, a wonderful, wonderful photograph where it's all about the gesture of this young boy skipping through the water, the, the water splashing at his feet as if he's almost walking on the water. And it's just a fantastic, fan, fantastic shot. Uh, graphically, and in terms of the composition, you have some wonderful stuff going on here. You have the, the two, two children here in the foreground. You have the, the, the adult figure here. You have figures in the in the background. You have the horizon lying here. You really get a sense of place. The sky has some wonderful clouds. But imagine this shot without this boy running through the frame. Uh, it might have been a, 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 an interesting shot with the two kids in the foreground and these other people in the background. But there's something special. There's something emotive. There's something just... Well, just, just magical about this boy who seems completely oblivious to everything everything happening around him. And the expression and the and the body language is, is stupendous. If I were going to describe what the gesture is here, it's so much about, you know, his legs, his arms, his body language, his expression, as if he's completely blissful in, in the moment. Moments like this happen so quickly that a photographer really oftentimes doesn't have time to anticipate them. So it has to have a sort of a, um, a sense of precognition sometimes. Uh, Sam Abel talks about finding the setting and then waiting for the moment. And I think this may or may not have been part of that. Uh, you can see here that the boy uh, left a wake of water from behind him. So he had started a good distance away. So the photographer here may have been able to anticipate the fact that, that this boy was going to come into the scene. And then uh, what they needed to decide was where did they position the camera and what did they decide to include or exclude from the frame? That's that's really, really tricky because uh, it could have easily happened where the where the subject, uh, where these two kids in the frame may have been eliminated. But I think that's a real important part of the composition. If you had cropped this here and cropped these out so they were just sort of uh, a more sort of a cinematic 16 by 9 composition. It still might be a good shot, but there's something to be said for these two kids that are so static, that are so still compared to this energetic boy splashing and moving through, uh, through the frame. Here's another shot made on, on a subway. And here you have a fairly a affectionate couple that are in the corner of a subway car while this other girl is standing by the by the door, completely indifferent to what's happening um, beside her. Uh, it's kind of funny that they, the couple there seems to be fairly affectionate with each other, but the girl is still fixated on what's happening with her phone, which it adds a little bit of humor to it. But the gesture here is not so much that the girl's on the phone, or even, or even the gesture of how the couple seems to be cuddled in the corner. 
The gesture for me is, is the contrast between the body language between the three figures there. They seem to be in very different places in their lives, and I don't know if they were even related to each other at all, whether they were even cognizant of, of the fact that the other, peop- the other person was there. But it's that, it's that contrast that adds that little bit of energy and gesture to the photograph that really makes it work. If that girl standing with the uh, Rolling Stone t-shirt had not been in the frame, it still might be a, a nice moment. But that having that girl there, particularly uh, with that body language, the way she her body just seems to be hanging there, as if literally she was hanging from a hook, uh, adds that, that a wonderful sense of, of, of tension, of energy, of interest to the shot. It really piques my interest in terms of you know, what's, what's happening in that, in that particular moment. Here's a, um, a shot by Holly uh, Tomlin, and this is of a dancer who's performing. And, and in, when you're uh, photographing somebody performing, especially a dancer, it's really all about gesture. Their bodies are constantly reshaping themselves as they are on the stage. And, and the challenge as a photographer is to try and make a photograph in which graphically that the person looks rather beautiful dance if, if you ever photograph people dancing at a wedding you know how awkward and strange people can look but when people are dancing for a performance um, there's a certain elegance and a classic classic sense of them when they're dancing and this really sort of captures that i really like the way that the display of her arms um create this sort of s curve but it's her expression and her expression, like she's just so, she's so blissful. She's completely in the moment of the dance. And it's a gesture that, that, that says so much in it, even though we don't have the context of the stage or, or who else is on the stage or what the performance is about without having to read the, the, the caption, you still get that there's something special and, and wonderful happening in that moment. And I think what's really key is, is the gesture. If you're shooting a performance, there are plenty of times to make pictures of people moving up, up around the stage, but the, the challenge for a really good photographer is to find that moment where something like this happens. That within the context of the frame, they make a picture that stands out on its own and captures the energy and the beauty of, of a performance. Here's a shot by Her, uh, Harvey Fish uh, that he made of a, of a man looking through some books here. I don't know exactly where this uh, was, but uh, nevertheless, it's uh, it's 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 a great shot. There's so many pictures that we make of people on the street, and um, with street photography, it's often people just walking up and down the street. But it's wonderful to to catch someone doing something. And here it's really a very simple moment. They are just browsing through some used books that are on this uh, book stand. And it's the way that his shoulders are sort of lifted up. His head is leaning forward. The way his hand is touching that book that he has an interest in. That that body language for me is gesture. Um, Harvey here is using a, a fairly moderate to wide lens. So it gives us a sense of what's happening around, around him in terms of a, a sense of place. Uh, I want to say this is like the Turkey or Middle East. I may be wrong. Let me see if he has anything in here as to where it is. Um, this may be at Wardia, but I'm not exactly sure what part of the world it, it's in. So he provides that context there, but it's the fact that he took a moment to get in close and capture this this moment where this guy is just browsing through this these books. It's, it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful moment. And, and I give you kudos for getting in nice and tight. Uh, a, lot, a lot of photographers would maybe see the scene and would shoot it from a distance away and use a 70 to 200 or a 18 to 300 millimeter lens. But there's something to be said for shooting wide and shooting close. There's an immediacy and an intimacy that happens when you do that. And I think that's what makes this image uh, really particularly strong. Here is an image by Moskova, and uh, um, for this, the 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 gesture is so much about how this guy is about to grasp uh, the cigarette that he's smoking. Um, like the previous shot, getting in close, getting in intimate really makes the shot happen. Using a longer telephoto lens creates a sense of distance and separation, not just between the photographer and the subject, but 
between the subject and the viewer. And getting in this intimately uh, really makes that gesture of the way he's about to grasp that cigarette all the more important. Uh, it also helps that it's the greatest point of contrast here. That white cigarette against the sort of gray and darker tones of his hands and his face, and especially the sunglasses and his hat, help draw our attention right, right directly to him. There are some brighter areas in the, in the background here, such as the lights coming through and the figures in the background, but those subjects have been blurred, they're out of focus, and he's using a limited depth of field to help draw our attention to this figure here in the, in the left-hand side of the frame who gives off a, a sense of uh, you know, being rather intimidating. So uh, it's wonderful that, uh, that uh, he got in this close to make the shot because I think that that proximity is really sort of key here. And it allowed him to really focus on that, on that, on that gesture. Had he shot this a couple of seconds before or after, that gesture would have been gone. And that's how fleeting a, a gesture can be. It, it happens in a matter of seconds. And sometimes you have to be really attentive and bold at the same time in order to make those shots. Sometimes when you're worried about whether or not to make the shot, you miss the gesture. And, and you may make photographs subsequently, but they always lack this, this special moment. And they're okay. You may be happy with what you got overall, but you always walk away with a sense of feeling, God, I could have done or captured something that much better. Now here's a gesture that doesn't include the uh, the face of the person at all. It's just the these old hands holding this brown paper bag, and gestures uh, can often just be about about the hands. There's some great great photographs where the gestures are just about the hands, and I just really love the way that these fingers are sort of curled around the other uh, handle here, and I love the color palette, the you know the pink hands, um, the the, the pattern of the suit, the pants, the almost blandness of the brown paper bag, and how all of these things converge together. If you look, take a look at the fingers, the, the fingers are, are, are arranged in a really unique and particular way. Obviously, it's, it's, it's uh, a way of holding it that provided the subject a certain degree of comfort, but it, it says something about, about the person. Even though we don't see the face, we don't know who they are, uh, it's... It's a great, a great moment, and I think that, you know, it, this is one of the great ways of being able to teach yourself how to pay attention to gestures, especially if you're not comfortable with approaching people face first and photographing in the face. Just making the habit of photographing hands and photographing people doing things with, with their hands can really kind of train your eye to pay attention to wonderful, wonderful gestures that are out there. Uh, here's a shot made by uh, Peter Amador at a uh, boxing, uh, a boxing event, and here uh, it's all about the gesture. You have the gesture of the guy who's almost face down on the mat. You have the guy who was uh, the obvious winner walking away towards the camera, with this body language of, of, of "Yeah, I got it." You have the referee coming into the frame, and it's 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 a great jo uh, shot. There's so much gesture uh, having here. Um, there's a lot of stuff here that's happening in the frame on the far left side and even at the top that I felt was extraneous. So I made a crop here. I usually don't uh, uh, crop other people's images, but I just wanted to show you how by tightening the crop and eliminating those things, neither the top or the bottom, that that gesture of the body language of all the, the, the figures here become that much more more prominent. Uh, you don't wander off into the frame like you do in the in the previous shot. By tightening up that crop, that, the gesture of all three people is made much more impactful. And a lot of people like to shoot full frame, and I'm, I'm one of those photographers. I rarely like to crop my images. I like to, to make the crop happen in camera whenever possible. But there are some times where that's just not going to happen. I just don't have the ability to move in closer enough or the ability to have a lens that's long enough to be able to isolate those elements. But it's nevertheless important to just keep an eye on those things because sometimes uh, the, the impact, the power of a gesture can be lost by the presence of extraneous elements uh, in the frame. Here's a shot by Ingate Tadros. And what I like about this shot is it's just the body language of the boy as he's eating and this dog is moving past him against this wall. It's 
it's so much gesture when it comes to people is not just about expression it's so much about body language and the way that he sort of shifts at his shoulders and his head uh, turns down towards the dog is really sort of telling the background here is is very very simple it's very clean and uh, there's nothing really special in the background it's all about the boy, the body language, the gesture, the expression, the juxtaposition between the boy and the dog that really make for an interesting shot here. Um, it really helps that you don't have a lot of distracting elements in the background. Uh, in a couple of other videos, I talked about the importance of being aware of your background, about the setting, and trying to define that first and allowing the subject or the, or the moment to happen within that space. But you have to find the setting first, either because uh, it's great, a great background, or great, great lighting, and then you just sort of have to be patient and allow things to happen. And I think this is one of those, the, those shots that really demonstrate that uh, aptly. Now here's a, a shot by David Hufford, and you know, if you listen to one of the uh, videos that I did before about the cliche in street photography, one of the biggest cliches we have are colorful blah colorful backgrounds where people are walking past. And it's not, that's not to say that some of those shots don't work. Some of those shots can really work beautifully. But I think it's the, the lazy man street photography for the most part. And if you look at any street photography group uh, online, be it on Flickr or someone else, you see so many of those images. And they're not particularly interesting or, or, or engaging, especially when you're looking at hundreds, if not thousands of them. The reason I picked this picture out, even though it sort of is along the lines of that real colorful background here, is is her body language. Her body language here is great. I just love the way she seems to be on a real mission with the way that her, her gait in this shot with the legs. Um, she's not sort of casually just strolling around. She's determined to get somewhere. And the other things that I like here are, are of course, the red against the yellow, the sort of orangish, reddish umbrella that contrasts here. Uh, I love all these lines, especially the shapes of the steps and this curve here and, and the light here. All that stuff is great. It's great, but I think that what helps to elevate this shot to, to making it just a little bit better than the standard uh, subject walking across a, a colorful background is just, just the body language. If you're going to start shooting st street photography, I think this is part and parcel of what you have to do. Uh, it, this is a way of sort of developing a way of seeing where you become aware not just of the subject but of the background. But I think it's really important to start paying attention to the body language and the expression of your subject when they're moving around. You just don't want somebody walking into the frame just for the sake of having someone in front of an interesting background. Uh, you're really not saying much of anything. It's like shooting fish in a barrel at that point. It doesn't make the shot any special, and it doesn't really make demonstrate your unique way of seeing. It's more like mimicking what someone else has done before. The trick is, and I'm as guilty of this as anyone, is that is I can settle on a moment like 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 similar to this, where it's a beautiful background and just wait for someone to come into the frame, or I can wait and look for something exceptional to happen. And uh, oftentimes, it's often. The, the body language that can that can make that uh, make that case. Now here's this shot by John McLaughlin and the gesture of the hand coming up to the lips of this woman here is just perfect gesture. It's so natural. It's so relaxed. This does not come off as posed or forced. She seems to be in a, in a moment and the photographer is able to, to, to capture that. And there's so much feeling here. There's so much thoughtfulness there. I don't know whether there whether this was a completely candid moment or whether this was sort of a an in between beats during a, a a formal portrait session, but whatever it was, the way her fingers come up to her mouth, mouth and nose is just just a beautiful moment. And you got some great light and color happening in in the shot here that make it great. Um, it looks like it was processed to to, to some degree here, um, but. Uh, I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that because I think that the moment is so sincere, it's so honest that I I feel that some of the processing here may take away from from that because it's it's calling attention to me. But you know, I guess it's something that I can live with because 
the gesture alone makes for such a wonderful, wonderful photograph. Uh, here's a, a shot made, made by Newport Homie. And uh, looking at the images that uh, he or she submitted, there were about three photographs, three or four photographs that he made of this girl. And if you go to his, uh, his, his Flickr, uh, his Flickr uh, group or pool, um, you'll see several shots. But this one is the one that stood out for me because of the way she was moving her hand through her hair. Um, when we go to festivals and we go to uh, fairs, many of us can end up making photographs of people at a distance with a telephoto lens. And for the most part, a lot of those shots may have an interesting person in the shot, but they're really not doing anything interesting. Uh, they may be very attractive. They may be a character. They may be sort of this costumed figure. And we make a document of what that person looked like. And, you know, you have dozens or hundreds of those shots. And after a while, they just... Well, they just take, they seem to look exactly the same, one after another and after another. The challenge here, as I'm saying over and over again, is to, if you find someone like this, wait it out. Make more than one photograph. Be careful and pay attention to the, the subtle changes in expression and body language. Sometimes it's easy when you're photographing someone who's interacting with other people. But even when the subject is not doing that, as they're observing the world around them, Sometimes they will start doing things with their hands, with their, with their face, with their body, and in this case with their hand, through their hair, that creates this gesture that makes, makes the shot special. When you go and take a look at his, uh, Flickr, uh, his Flickr account and you see those images, which are fairly close together, you'll see the difference that I'm talking about there. And, it, and gesture doesn't have to be a grand thing. It doesn't have to be a big, dramatic moment. Most times, at least for me, it's always something very small, but very, very telling. Here's a, a last shot made by Technical One. And for me, the gesture here is not so much about the body language of the person, but the, the gesture is the interplay of the color between the yellow cam and the green wall. That, for me, is the gesture. The, the blurring of the car going through through the frame, the person in blue with a red scarf in the background, it's the interplay of color that becomes gesture for me. And I know that's one of the harder things to sort of understand because with gesture, we oftentimes are thinking about gesture in terms of someone doing something with their body or with their hands. But one of the things I've learned from hearing Jay over and over again and having the benefit of talking to him Gesture can be almost anything. It's that little something. And when you photograph enough, you'll recognize that a moment like this can be one, a wonderful gesture. Again, this is the kind of a shot where the setting is found first. You find that wall. You see that person leaning against the wall. And you could just make that shot and then walk away. But it's, it's this photographer's willingness to stick around and allow it to have something else come into the frame, in this case, this yellow cab, which are always in abundance in New York, to help complete the shot. I don't know how many photographs he may have made uh, during the time frame here, but um, you, you only need one in order to make it work. And uh, this shot, I think, really works with, with respect to gesture. So thanks to all of you who have submitted images. I'm still uh, soliciting images for um, one of these videos, which I'd like to do on photographing strangers. So I've written a book called Portraits of Strangers, which I'll probably be uh, um, making the focal focal point of the uh, the next video. So I would love for you to submit images to the Flickr pool and to tag them using the hashtag, hashtag TCF Strangers. So when you're uploading images here, just tag them with TCF Strangers and they'll show up uh, when I do a search on that and I'll choose images from there. Um, the, the book is available for just $8, and uh, I'll have a link here in the in the notes here where you can uh, pick it up. It's just $8, and if you've ever wanted to make really good photographs of strangers, this is the book um, to have. But uh, thanks again for your contributions, for listening, and if you like what you're seeing in these videos, please subscribe. And if you've discovered The Candid Frame uh, through this YouTube video, please visit us at thecandidframe.com where... Every week I release videos, which, not videos, but interviews with some of the world's best, best photographers who discuss every aspect of photography. 
Uh, some of them, of them are master phot photographers. Some are um, just enthusiasts, but all of whom are making exceptional images. So come and check us out. So until next time, this is Yvadi and X, and I'll see you next time.